Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Govinsky's Tutorials. Today is the third in a three-part series on the SWAM brass apps by Audio Modeling. In my first video I went into the trumpets, the second video focused on the horns and tubas, and today's video is focusing on the trombones. Before I say anything else, I want to just mention I've got four copies of any SWAM brass app for iOS to give away to subscribers to the channel. If you're not a subscriber yet, you can subscribe now, that's fine. All the details of what you've got to do to win are in the pinned comment at the top of the YouTube comment section. Now, before I continue with my introduction, I'm going to let you hear one example of how great these can sound. So, you're going to hear three different trombones playing together and towards the end, a trumpet solo coming in. So let's have a listen to that and then I'll continue with my introduction. So I'm sure you'll agree these really sound incredible. Uh, they can sound very, very realistic. And in any, in any case that you think they don't sound that realistic, it's not the problem of those apps. It's the problem of my playing. Um, I'm not a great keyboard player. I'm not a brass player and so on. Now, um, let me just continue with the introduction. So I just want to say, if you haven't watched the first two videos in this series, I would strongly recommend it. So the first video focused on the trumpets, but I also went into various important aspects of how to set the app up correctly, for example, to uh, use with whatever MPE controller you might be using to control it, or whatever keyboard and so on. Um, in the second video, as well as looking at the tubas and the horns, I also went into a lot of detail about how to set up GeoShred as a virtual controller that you can use to play these apps expressively. I think that's very useful because it's great to play these with an MPE controller and not everybody has an MPE controller. I think GeoShred is one of the best and cheapest options for you to play these expressively with if you don't have a physical MPE controller. And even if you do have a physical MPE controller, some people might prefer GeoShred because of some advantages like how quickly you can play on the glass screen or how easy it is to set up custom scales and things like that. Um, now, also in the first two videos, I had a lot of musical examples, including lots of examples of these played in a very ambient way, uh, kind of experimental, putting on some a lot of effects, for example, putting on heavy amount of reverb and so on. I think they sound incredible like that, so it's worth going back and uh, looking at those first two videos to get more musical examples. 
today I want to keep this video very short. So the example I just gave is the only real um, detailed musical example of some of these playing uh, together that I'm going to give. The main focus of today's video will just be a brief comparison of how these five apps sound similar and different from each other. The other thing that I want to mention here in the introduction is some of the pros and cons of buying these on desktop and buying them on iOS. I want to help people make the best decision for them where will be the best place for them to buy these apps. Now, on iOS, one big advantage is you can buy the apps individually. If you just want to buy one trumpet, for example, you can do that on iOS. On desktop, you can't just buy one of these instruments. You've got to buy bundles. So that's one advantage that iOS has. Now, maybe um, one advantage that desktop has is that uh, there's a 50% discount for students. So if you're a student, you could, for example, if you wanted to buy the whole bundle on desktop, you could get that for $300, half the price of the regular bundle on desktop. So that's also worth bearing in mind. Um, another thing worth mentioning is on iOS, there's no big bundle. There are three smaller bundles, the trumpets bundle, the horns and tubas bundle, and the trombones bundle. And I mentioned in a previous video that the reason for that is that Apple does not allow 15 apps in a bundle. So that's an Apple limitation. So on iOS, you can't buy one big bundle with all of these. You can only buy the three smaller bundles or you can buy the apps individually. Another thing I mentioned in a previous video and that I want to repeat here because it's important for people to be aware of is that in the iOS apps, some functions are locked. I've explored these in detail and I can say that in general, these are pretty advanced parameters that are not that important to the average user. There are some things that I think that people would like. Uh, for example, some things about the half valve amount that can make a bit of a difference to the sound or the mute size and mute tone. But in general, these are already really amazing sounding instruments. They're very expressive. I think that most people will not really miss these locked parameters. These locked things will become available as in a purchase at some point, probably, is what audio modeling has said. But they haven't said when, and they haven't said how much they will cost. So that's another thing to bear in mind. Now, um, let's continue with this video and let's have a listen to the differences between these trombones. I don't know if any of you have seen the movie Chinatown, Roman Polanski. One of my all-time favorite movies and there's a great old jazz soundtrack in it so this is where i heard this song first bunny berrigan can't get started it's an old jazz standard i guess from the 30s it's so cool i love it so i'm doing my feeble attempt of playing a bit of this into a very useful app photon au which can record mpe midi so let's have a listen to how this sounds, I'll just go through all the different apps. I'm going to start with the alto trombone, and then we'll hear the same thing on the tenor trombone. Notice, though, that some of these, by default, are actually transposed, right, to make them a bit lower um, when you play on the keyboard, so do pay attention to that. Uh, so we'll go through all five of them, and we'll just compare how they sound. Give you an idea of the timbre. Okay. <laughs> Uh-huh. 
here's the double bass. Now there's very little difference in the lower range of these, just two semitones. Let me play a couple of notes on each octave for you to compare. Okay. So, I prefer, definitely, the timbre of the double bass one, down lower, and the bass one higher. So, there is a bit of a difference in the, in the vibe of these. Okay, bass one. So there's about four or five semitones difference between the bass and the tenor bass, not a huge amount of difference. This is the lowest note on the bass, on the tenor bass. This is the lowest note. Okay, let's compare. So, bass. Obviously the tenor bass goes a little bit higher as well. Okay, so let's compare the tenor bass and the tenor trombone. Go down again. So, tenor trombone this is the lowest it can go. So there's quite a bit of difference in the range of the tenor bass and the tenor. So this is the lowest the tenor bass can go. And this is the lowest the tenor can go. So let's compare. Okay, now let's compare the tenor and the alto. So let's see first the lowest note we can get on the alto. Okay, so this is the lowest note on the alto and on the tenor. Ah, okay, because the alto is not transposed, the tenor is. Let's just change this transposition so they're both the same. So this is the lowest on the tenor. And on the alto, it's here it's just a few semitones. One, two, three, four, five semitones difference. Okay. So let's just compare up high.
So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, just in conclusion, um, these sound seriously amazing. There is nothing like them on iOS except the GeoSwam apps in GeoShred, which are the audio modeling apps in GeoShred. Uh, incredibly realistic, incredibly expressive, just beautiful sounding, beautiful sounding. Um, they sound really, really great, as I've said a few times, with a bunch of FX on them as well. Sound great with big reverb on them. Just beautiful, beautiful for ambient and experimental music. I mean, all kinds of things. You know, you want to do funk stuff, you're going to want a horn section in there. Obviously jazz, classical, um, I mean, even pop or whatever. You could find certainly room for a trumpet and things like that. Um, but yeah, for me personally, I think these have immense potential for beautiful ambient and experimental music. I really love them. I just want to say a few things. Um, the price is expensive by iOS standards. And I do wish there was a better bundle available. I think that these would sell a lot more if there was a jazz bundle, for example, with, you know, a flugelhorn in it, a B-flat trumpet, um, maybe one trombone, you know, a tenor trombone or something, and a few other things. And then maybe you could have a classical bundle where there would be a few other different apps instead of having the trombone bundle, the trumpet bundle, and so on. Um, but I also want to say about the price of these, I mean, obviously I wish they were cheaper because, um, then more people would buy them. Um, but I also understand why these are highly priced. I was having a conversation with Pat Scandalis from Moforte, the developers of GeoShred the other day. So he was a student at, uh, Stanford and he studied with Julius O. Smith who is considered the father of physical modeling. And he was just showing me one of the books that Julius wrote. And it was, you know, six inches wide, a uh, hardback book. I mean, absolutely massive. And this is one of a series of, I think he said four books maybe on physical modeling. So, you know, the amount of knowledge that goes in to making instruments like this, it's insane. You know, uh, you can't just be your average coder and go in you know here you need you need great coding skill but you also need like serious serious musical knowledge serious knowledge of dsp uh you know there's so much involved in designing instruments like this you really really need to understand all the subtle details of what it takes to make a trombone sound like a trombone what it takes to make a trumpet sound like a trumpet. So I do understand why these are expensive instruments. I just wish they were cheaper so that more people could afford them because at this price on iOS, they're a little bit of a, an exclusive thing. But I would encourage anybody, you know, even if you can't afford to buy all of them, and personally, I am really glad that I've got them all. They've, they've got their subtle differences, but they are beautiful. If you can't afford to buy a bundle or, or three bundles for that matter, um, definitely get one or two, you know, because they really, really, really sound so great. Um, as I said, also, if you don't have an MPE controller, don't worry too much. On iOS, there's GeoShred, which can act as a virtual MPE controller. There's also Velocity Keyboard by Blue Mangu. And there is KB1 by Kai Aras. So uh, look into those. Um, if you want to, you know, learn more about the pros and cons of each of those, don't forget that the Audiobus forum, so A-U-D-I-O-B dot U-S, go to Audiobus or just search on Google iOS Music Audiobus forum. You'll find it. Uh, that is a great place to go and learn about apps and get people's opinion about different apps. So yeah, uh, treat yourself to at least one of these, preferably before the intro period ends the moment they're $20 for one app and that's going up to 30 after the 22nd of February. Anyway, really, really beautiful instruments. I'm very glad we've got these on iOS. Okay, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. I hope it helps you to make a wise purchasing decision. And I hope you're subscribed so you don't miss out on 
more good stuff from me. I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.